The following is a special presentation of the World Baseball Classic. The 2013 World Baseball Classic has moved from the island and the desert to the hotbed of Florida, Miami. This glistening city of retro hotels and sparkling nightlife now opens its doors and roof to four teams who hope this is a short stop on the way to San Francisco. Up first, they shrug their shoulders. They're raising their eyebrows now about Team Italy. It has shown it can play in the tournament with a come from behind win versus Team Mexico and a mercy win over Team Canada. Coming out of Puerto Rico like a hurricane, the Dominican Republic. Embarrassed in the 09 tournament, the club with its powerful lineup led by Robinson Cano and their closer, Fernando Rodney, has dominated the competition so far. They seem to be the early favorites to roll to the finals. A win by Italy might make people know that they have more news in Italy than just the election of a pope. And for the Dominicans, another step towards the goal of a WBC championship. First of two from Miami, next. Baseball fans around the world and all the ships at sea, we welcome you to our coverage of the World Baseball Classic. Italy is here in Miami. Team Italy, that is, to take on a very strong team from the Dominican Republic. This is game one of two on this opening day of the second round, and there are the two combatants for this one. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne along with Rick Sutcliffe. We got to see round one different places. You were in the desert in Phoenix. Yeah, the big surprise there was Italy, but I'm telling you what, they can swing the bats. Mike Piazza is their hitting coach, says they're going to do it again. I was in San Juan. No surprise. Dominican Republic got there. Puerto Rico advanced. A bit of a surprise. Many thought Venezuela would be that team. They were not. Team Dominican, red hot. Well, and when I think of Team Dominican, I think of Robinson Cano. When I think of Cano, I think of that smile. Think of Magic Johnson, Tiger Woods. The the reason those guys smiled a lot was because they were so good. The game came so easy for them. They had a lot to smile about. With Cano, it's his ability to take the barrel of the bat anywhere that he needs to. If he continues to do that, he's going to take the team from the Dominican Republic right onto the semifinals. He did not have a good 2009 WBC where he hit only 231. Look at the numbers he's putting up now. He said, it's my responsibility. Told his teammates, I'm the reason we didn't do well before. For Italy, it's about building baseball in that country and trying to put some names to it. Yeah, and if you were going to build a franchise in Italy or in Major League Baseball, Anthony Rizzo is one of those guys you would want to start with. Not only as a player, but as a person. He just absolutely gets it. Whatever it is, when they talk about he has it, he has it. And Gary, I love what he told me before the series started in Phoenix. He said, you don't have to get a hit to have a great ball game. Not only does he provide some run production, but it's run prevention also that there was a key for Italy getting here. Take a look at the numbers he had with the Cubs with that 285 average, a good one. He's three for 11 and three RBIs. He has been very productive so far for Team Italy. Starting pitchers obviously really matter. In this game, we are going to get a look at Diago de Sevilla, who is a good pitcher, good starter, making his second start. The other side, Edison Volquez, only pitched one inning in the opener. He gets the opportunity here to go a little longer. Well, we are talking about Art Deco in the city of Miami. It certainly is in evidence here at the ballpark. This, of course, is the new park, home of the Marlins. That is the Art Deco in center field here at Marlins Park. Roof opens and closes. Originally, they were going to close the roof for this game, but it looks as though it is going to stay open, which will create some winds that tend to come in from left field, blow into the hitter's face, and then turn and go out to right which means it should favor the left handed power hitters so they can get the ball up in the air here ballpark pretty fair though for pitcher hitters it really is and if you're a pitcher the first thing you want to look at Gary is that center field number of four hundred and eighteen feet you want to use that to your advantage if you possibly can stay up and away when you fall behind in the count 
And these two clubs, this is obviously a game in which there is a heavy favorite, the Dominican Republic, coming in 3 0, winning all of their games in San Juan. Italy in uh, Phoenix, a, as Rick said, a very big surprise team going 2 and 1. And uh, most surprising, perhaps, they were the first team to end up qualifying for the next round. Yeah, there were some big surprises and some big favorites in Phoenix as well. Yeah. I really thought Team Mexico was strong. Their pitching was outstanding. The defense was good, but the timely hitting was not. Dominican Republic will be the home team as they take the field here in Miami against a, a team from Italy, which will feature some major league names and a lot who have played a lot of minor league baseball as well. It's an experienced team, if not to the level of the Dominican Republic. Punto, Denofia, Rizzo, Liddy, Calabello, who is a legitimate star, Costanzo, Niarino, Shinini, Butera, and Granado. They're starters. Well, you're exactly right about Chris Corabello. And I tell you what, the Minnesota Twins are so high on him and what he might do this year. His locker in spring training, right between Joe Maurer and Justin Morneau. And the starting pitcher who really hopes he gets to go a lot further than he did in game one is Edison Volquez. Well, you know what? He did it last year for the San Diego Padres when he really re re resurrected his career. I mean, he was an all star back in 2008, his rookie season with the Cincinnati Reds. Had some surgery, had some arm problems, but he came back last year with an outstanding season. His first start, as you mentioned, only went one inning because of the rain. He's back out there again this afternoon. So, well, he was on, boy, he pitched really well in that one inning that he worked, and they were disappointed, as was he, that he wasn't able to keep going. Good defense has been played throughout this World Baseball Classic. Overall, you've got to do that, especially for a team like Italy. For the Dominican Republic, they got some stars to know how to get it done. And he's going to make the start. He will be in left field. He's played well out there. Great speed in center. Diaz is having an outstanding WBC. And both have to play it in the outfield. Nelson Cruz performed well in the games in San Juan. Power hitter Henley Ramirez making the start at third. One of the game's really exciting shortstops, Jose Reyes. Robinson Cano, of course, at second base. And saving some errors over there. Arnganacion gets the start at first. Carlos Santana switch hitting catcher behind the plate. I was teasing Tony Pena before the game saying no wonder you're not managing in the big leagues anymore. You got a gold glove shortstop as your designated hitter today. <laughs> he just laughed of course Eric Ibar the designated hitter. Why not Jose Reyes out there at short Reyes has done both uh, so far in the WBC he's been the shortstop and also the designated hitter. You've got so many players of such talent for a team like the Dominican. And Tony Pena wants to give everybody a chance, so you end up moving guys around a little bit, which you obviously would not do if you were involved with the ball club in the regular season. But the big thing about that, Gary, you've got to get those players to accept that. And yep. Tony Pena did. We are ready to go. Nick Punto stands in. He will take the pitch for a strike, and we are underway. Nick Punto has had a good deal of major league experience. The hitters for this ball club from Italy are going to try and be as patient as they can. They want to make Volquez have to deliver a lot of pitches early. The pitch count has gone up from the first round from 65 to 80. So the starters can stay in a lot longer in these games if they are pitching well. Here, that's a great point. Uh, it's something that Nick Punto did really well in that series out there in Phoenix. Even though he didn't do a whole lot offensively. A lot of times he would see six and seven pitches in at bat. The next thing you know, you start worrying about that pitch count in that first series. And the count vital. Mike Piazza talking with him before the ball game today. He said we have to manufacture stuff here. We don't have the firepower that Team Dominican does, and we know that. But he said, and he was looking at Japan. He says, I look at Japan. I don't see a lineup with a lot of names I recognize, but somehow they find a way to win. Don't beat yourself. He said that's the same thing that we've got to do now that we've moved on here to the second round. Volquez's pitch is way up high. And even early on, Volquez looks entirely different than he did in game one. Volquez was firing fastballs at the knees in that inning that he pitched in San Juan. Here he's way up high. Here it's called adrenaline. 
when you go down to the bullpen as a starting pitcher to warm up, you get command of your fastball, your curveball, your changeup. The one thing when the game starts you have to get control of is the adrenaline, and he does not have it. Boy, there's exactly how Team Italy wanted to start this ball game. Nick Punto draws the walk. He is on. And Piazza said our first two guys in the lineup have to be table setters. That's what we ask of them because what firepower we have in our lineup is three four five and six. That's where we've got it. He said our bottom hitters seven eight and nine have to scrap their way to get on base. So we got to set the table at the middle of the order drive in the runs and then hope for something from the bottom of the order. Narfia up. A lot of major league experience. He's had a four for 13 so far. In the World Baseball Classic, and that's going to send Santana out. Not only is he not getting the pitches down, he's getting them higher. Well, what are we looking for for these two teams to win? You know what? I really think that the, the key that I know the key was in Phoenix for Team Italy was to be aggressive early in the strike zone, and that's as far as their pitchers are concerned. Their pitching coach Bill Holmberg said look these guys are have never seen you before the first time around they want to see a pitch or two and Italy constantly jumped ahead in the count. I thought that was a huge key to them pitching well for the Dominican Republic when you look at that lineup from one to nine. I mean Diaz is a major league leadoff hitter keep that line of moving don't everybody go up there trying to be a hero or hit home runs just get on base. Well, let's see how this works here. One of the other things that Lee has done, they have scored in the first inning of each of their games in round one. They beat Mexico six to five in an upset. They mercy ruled Canada 14 to eight, then lost to the USA 6 2, but scored first there. Runner on at first base, and now they're going to try the breaking ball, and he can't get that in either inside. You know what? I think it fooled everybody, including home plate umpire Angel Hernandez. This is a strike. And I love what Bill Castro, the pitching coach, did to Volquez. He went out there and said, hey, you know what? You need to slow down and throw in a breaking ball. We'll help you. Six pitches out of the strike zone to start the ball game here. And that one's even higher. That fastball is just rising there. I mean, I guess. And Gary, having been there, particularly when I was a young pitcher, it, what it is is you get long with your stride. And when you get long with your stride, your arm gets left behind, and you're not able to lower the location of that pitch. He's got to shorten his stride and land softer. Runner at first base, Nick Punto. There he does follow through a little more, and that misses. Wow. How about that? He has walked the first two batters faced in the game and has not thrown a strike. Right now, Edison Volquez feels like the count should be two and two, and I'm not sure that I disagree with him. Chris DeNorfia thought that that 3 0 pitch was a strike because he never left the batter's box. So, two on, nobody out, no strikes thrown, and uh, the RBI opportunity right where they wanted it. Rizzo coming up is not a 3 for 11. He has driven in three runs. And again, Santana goes out. How about this, Gary? The reason Santana is out there right now, probably to go over signs because there's a runner at second. You don't just put down one finger. But there was nobody in the Dominican Republic's bullpen. There wasn't a bullpen catcher. There was not one pitcher down there when the top half of the first inning started. Everybody's running down there right now, and there's going to be some people get up. Lorenzo Barcelo is heading down from the dugout to the bullpen. He has pitched and is a relief pitcher. Now in at third base is Ramirez as they're thinking bunt here. He shows it, takes it up high for a ball. He's not going to swing. Probably until a strike is thrown. Why should he? It's nine straight out of the strike zone. And some concern over there on that bench early. Runners off first and second base. Liddy waiting on deck. It's amazing. This is really amazing. And you see the frustration on the mound now. Volquez with a little body action. Just kind of putting his arms up in the air like what the heck is going on here. Well right now it, the old scenario is the elevator is not going all the way to the top because he's trying to make up for it from the neck down. He's got to think about what's happening and he's got to quit throwing the fastball up in the zone make an adjustment. Delivery on the way and the, I mean it, he's had a couple of pitches in the last at bat that were close but most of these pitches here in the inning are not remotely close to the strike zone. 
What doesn't make any sense though is for a veteran pitcher to continue to make the same mistake. Look at how long that stride is. He has got to shorten up on that. When you shorten up and you soften up, you're able to lower your sights. Edison Volquez of the San Diego Padres, 29 year old right hander, started with the Texas organization. As we said, he worked that perfect inning with a strikeout in game one in San Juan, then had a 50 minute rain delay and didn't come back. That ball was taken unbelievable. 12 consecutive pitches out of the strike zone. The bases are loaded. And this is a ball club. If they get a strike, it's done damage. Italy's hitting 441 with runners in scoring position in the first round that they played in Phoenix. They were 15 for 34. Now the base is loaded and Alex Liddy coming up. Liddy four for ten in the first round with a couple of RBIs. Sacks full for Italy. And a check swing. Did he go? Yes. Oh mercy. That's the last thing you want to do for the first strike. I cannot believe that the take sign was not on right there. I realize it's your cleanup hitter, but there's absolutely no reason to even take a bat up to the batter's box with you when a guy's thrown 12 consecutive balls. That's a huge mental mistake, I think, on the part of Team Italy. It may really help Volquez now to regroup. That ball is going to be put down the line in right field. Cruz going over into the corner. He will make the catch, tagging up Nick Pinto. He'll score. And Orfield will move over to third base, and the team Italy takes the one nothing lead on Liddy's RBI sack fly. Well, outstanding base running on the part of Pinto and Norfia to get to third, but I do not understand what Anthony Rizzo was doing there. That ball was down the line. You could see that Cruz thought he was going to catch it. There's a ball hit. There's a sack fly. But if Rizzo goes back and tags, look at where he catches this ball. There's no way he could have gotten turned around and thrown you out at second base. That would have taken the double play out of the equation. Now Volquez with one ground ball can get out of this. Chris Colabello. And a swing and a miss as Volquez burns that one in. This is the designated hitter for Italy five for eleven he's had a home run and has picked up four RBIs so Volquez now with an opportunity to get out of the inning, giving up only one after throwing 12 consecutive pitches out of the strike zone as the infield of course will play for the double play here as Rick noted with that runner not tagging and moving down to second base pitch is going to be high and inside one and one. Right. It's not going to do a lot of running. They have very little speed on this team. Well, you know, with Nick Punto not being the younger version of Nick Punto back when he could steal a base, your leadoff guy doesn't have a whole lot of speed. There's just not any there. Outfield in a couple of steps for this batter deep in the batter's box. Volquez's off speed delivery misses up high. He certainly hasn't. Corrected everything here, two and one. And we've not seen one change up yet, which was really a big pitch that helped him come back with the nice season a year ago in San Diego. This is a huge moment in the ball game. It is. I mean, this is a chance for Italy to really put some pressure on the Dominican, which has played so loose in the first round. I mean that positively. And that ball put in the air, hit hard, right center field, at his way back of the wall. Hey! Goodbye home run a good eight rows back what a shot that's over 400 feet away Colabella delivers a three RBI homer in the DH has stunned the Dominican here in the first inning. I asked Joe Maurer in Phoenix about his teammate Chris Colabello and I said I hear he's got a little bit of power. He said he's got a lot of power. Well now everybody in this ballpark knows that that is a tremendous opposite field blast. And Volquez surrendering the homer and a four nothing lead for Team Italy here in the first inning. 20 pitches have already been thrown by Volquez. That is a foul ball on a check swing, and there's your changeup. Finally, the first time he used that pitch 
here in this first inning. I tell you what, I've seen a lot of baseball games played in this ballpark over the last year and a half. I've not seen anything go that far, with the exception of Mr. Stanton. Boy, that was a shot. Breaking ball, that will catch the outside corner for a strike. Mike Costanzo, three for 11, three RBIs. See out of Springfield, uh, Pennsylvania, where he was born. A lot of dual citizenship players on this team from Italy. Ground ball towards second base. Robinson Cano is up with that one. He'll make the play to record the out, and there are two down. Well, Italy has taken advantage of the first inning in these games. They have now scored eight runs in the first inning, going back to the first round and the first inning in this one. Played umpire Angel Hernandez and a, an excited team Italy. I mean, they got a long way to go, but it's a great way to start. Fastball is going to ride inside. Chiarino, three for 11. No home runs, three RBIs. Getting the start in right field. And that's going to be the second base. Broke the back. Cano's here to put it away. But what an inning. Seven come to the plate. Four score. Delabello, their big DH, hits the three RBI homer. And look at this. Well, we've had a lot of surprises in this World Baseball Classic in this first inning, first half of the first inning. A surprise. Far from over, but what a start for Team Italy. Now we'll see whether or not they can pitch and play the D they need. Here is Reyes leading it off. Jose Reyes will take the pitch outside for a ball. Switch hitter at a four hit first game in the first round has not had a hit since. He is four for 14 coming out of the games in San Juan. Great speed at the top of the order. And that will be taken for the high strike. De Silva on the mound, right hander, 27 years old. Major Marco Mazzieri telling me before the game the reason De Silva's out there. In the air to right field in that corner. Wind blowing it right back to the wall. He already went back to get it, makes the catch, just barely staying in the yard. Here's the rest of the lineup for the Dominican. Ibar Cano, Ancanacion, Ramirez, Cruz, Santana, Anita, and Diaz are batting in the number nine spot. Nelson Cruz has always been one of those streaky type hitters. When he's swinging the bat well, he can be a carrier. 27 year old uh, right hander waiting as Ibar will stand in. And Gary, honestly, the reason that De Silva is on the mound starting this game. Is because, like the manager said, he throws strikes. And that's what we need. And how long he's going to stay in the ball game obviously depends on how successful he is. The first sign of trouble, the bullpen will be ready. Ivars had a two for nine. Switch hitter puts that one up in the air towards shallow right. Nick Pino, the second baseman, is back on it, and he's got it. Two down. Take a look at the numbers here for Tiago da Silva. That name kind of sounds like a like a ultimate fighter, doesn't it? I mean, he'd be the last guy in the world you'd want to mess with. You see the 19 games there. He of course plays over in the Italian league. An outstanding changeup, a good breaking ball. And when I asked pitching coach Bill Holmberg about his fastball, he said, "Outstanding changeup, good <laughs> curveball." <laughs> That's great. I don't know anything about his fastball. <laughs> well, actually, against this team from the Dominican, he may be better off not throwing a lot of fastballs because they are a fastball hitting lineup. Look at Cano. Boy, he came all the way out of the batter's box, making it tough on Angel Hernandez to make a call. Cano taking. He has hit successfully in all three games. Big start. Nine for 15 with a home run and five RBIs in the first round and the Voted the MVP in the first round. That's a strike on the outside corner. And clearly coming to the plate, trying to make De Silva have to throw because De Silva got a couple of quick outs. I was going to say, I 
Robinson Cano, that's the first time I've ever seen him look like he was going to bunt ever in his career. The Silva's delivery to him. Cano will take it inside. Here, I tell you, another thing is different than what we saw in the top of the first. The relief pitchers and catchers for Team Italy, they're in place in case any problem were to occur. They weren't down there for the Dominican. Here's the 2 1 delivery to Silva's pitch swung out of mess. And again, you see that changeup. And, and more importantly than the changeup is his ability to locate it. And look at the location on that. I mean, that is absolutely perfect, right to the glove of catcher Drew Butera. De Silva was born in San Paulo, Brazil, got his citizenship in Italy in 2009. And that'll go to first base. That is a fair ball. Rizzo could not get it into the corner. Niarini, Niarini chasing it down. We'll get it back in. It'll be a stand-up double, and Cano remains hot. Well, it's it's the reason right here that he's one of the best hitters in the game of baseball. If De Silva were to have thrown this pitch in the Italian league, it probably would have been strike three with another swing and miss. It's another changeup in the exact same location, but that's the adjustment that you have to make. To contend for a batting title year in, year out, as Robinson Cano does. Just a bullet down into the corner. Anthony Rizzo not able to come up with it. Chiarini bobbled it a little bit down there in the right field corner, and Robinson Cano gets to second. And Canacion coming up. RBI opportunity here. Three for ten. He has driven in two. The off speed pitch in for a strike. For the Dominican team, they are 11 for 40 with runners in scoring position. That's a 275 team average compared with that 441 for Italy. Two down, runner at second base. And a check swing, and he went around. Angel Hernandez makes the call. Showing the ability right here to not only locate that changeup down and away to a left handed hitter, but doing the same thing to a guy from the right side. Get these hitters off balance. You like the fastball and like the swing hard. That one is going to be foul tipped into the mid. He got him. So how about that? No runs, one hit, one left on. The Dominican Republic trailed for one of 27 innings in the first round. They trail here. Well, we'll see now if Volquez can settle down here. After giving up the three walks, four runs on one hit, the homer. And all three of those walks scored. He's already better than he was in the first inning. He's thrown the first pitch strike. <laughs> That'll make him feel better. Drew Butera, two for eight with a homer, four RBIs in the first round. He'll foul that one right straight back. I know that the Silva is going to get credit for the strikeout, but watch what Butera does here. Watch how he moves in in hopes that Robinson Cano is at second base giving location. By moving in, you tell him, hey, he's coming in. That means hard. If he was, everybody's going to tell you that they don't. But Gary, as you know, every team I ever played for, as we see a called third strike right there to Butera, Butera might be upset at striking out in his at bat, but I'll tell you what he did. If the team from the Dominican was trying to give location with second, they will never do it again because of what he did to get that last out. It's interesting. Uh, always part of the game at Rick as you said yet there are some hitters who have who said I never wanted anyone to do that. Cal Ripken Jr. was that guy. Joe Morgan. Joe, Morgan Joe was I asked that Joe guy. about that and Joe said guys used to tell me we'll tell you we'll tell you what the pitches are we'll tell you where the location is because I don't want to know. Do not do that. When I first got to the big leagues with the Dodgers, they said, "Look, kid, you can swing the bat. If you're standing on second base, you this is how we give signs. You better be giving them." Every team I was ever yep. on, yep. and we always watch the opponent too. And and you know Robinson Cano saying he didn't or whatever, but when a guy swings and misses by that much, sometimes you go, "Wait a minute, what what just happened?" What happened? Yeah. One ball, one strike count. Anthony Granado batting ninth, puts the ball in the air towards left field. Anita is there and he will put it away. Two down here in the second inning so Volquez settling in a little bit. Top of the order Nick Punto coming up. Volquez just trying to reestablish himself. You know what the flags are calm right now but I'll tell you what I, I don't believe 
in this ballpark with the roof open there's any such thing as a routine fly ball. Well we saw it before the game started those flags out there in the outfield were just like that. The flags that were being held at home plate for the anthems were whipping. The, the guys almost dropped them. They could hardly yeah. hold them up during the national anthem. And it looks like a, and it's been the tendency in this ballpark with the roof open that the wind comes in from left field towards the plate circles out to right. Now we're going to get a visit to the mound here. Santana taking a needed walk here. So watch how he got hit. Oh, right off that left elbow. I mean, that's just part of the everyday life of a catcher. They get hit in one place or another every single ball game, and a lot of times every inning. The last place they get hit is on the equipment. <laughs> it's always somewhere else. And one of the one of the unwritten rules here for all of the coaches managers for all teams in the WBC. No player. Is going to be put in any situation where he might be injured or might be playing injured. That's a great point Gary because talking with Tony Pena about. Edison's Volquez's first start. Volquez was adamant he was going back out there after the 50 minute rain delay. Tony Pena was adamant that you're not. Listen, young man, your your future is more important than what we're doing here. We are not going to take a chance on you getting hurt. You'll get another opportunity, and he is. These managers and the assigned GMs to each of these teams, they are in contact with the managers and GMs of the major league teams the players play for. They listen to what they say. The major league manager says, look, I saw my guy pitching the other day. There's something wrong. Please hold him out or please limiting whatever. They will do that in order to protect the player. You know, it was interesting in Arizona that the, the San Francisco Giants told Team Mexico Romo could not pitch on back to back days. But after they won the first one and knew they might need him the next day, everything changed. Everything he came in changed. there. Well, what a comeback by Volquez after giving up those three walks to start the ball game in the first inning. He retires the side in order here in the second, striking out two. Italy on top. Great blimp shot right there of downtown Miami, which is not very far from the ballpark, which is really considered to be downtown, just a little bit outside the big buildings. I can't come to this town enough. It is absolutely breathtaking. And De Silva goes back to work, and the pitch will be taken for a strike. Hanley Ramirez, Nelson Cruz, Carlos Santana do up for the Dominican Republic. That'll be a base hit into left field. Ramirez off the end of the bat. Costanza will get it back in. Second hit for the Dominican. I think they're starting to figure some things out. They want to be patient. They want to have good quality at bats. Keep the line of moving. But once he gets ahead in the count, don't think hard. Think soft because his strength is his off speed pitches, and Ramirez was all over that one. So the leadoff man on. That'll be hit number two for the Dominican. One of the ironies in the numbers is the fact that coming into the second round, Italy is hitting 336, and the Dominicans hitting 324. You never would have thought that coming here. Not that that's a telling point, but certainly nobody expected it. There's a base hit. Cruz, Nelson Cruz has hit in all four games of the WBC. Two on, nobody out. Tony Pena was telling us during batting practice that Nelson Cruz is as streaky as any hitter in the game of baseball today. And he goes I really like the streak that he's in right now the reason for that is he's not pulling off the baseball he's staying patient there's another off speed pitch right there had he been looking fastball and over aggressive he would have pulled that foul but he was right on it. So the Dominican gets two on here in the second inning. The first two. Here is Carlos Santana switch hitting catcher. He's gone two for eight, a home run, two RBIs in the first round. And they're coming up swinging. They're going after that first pitch. Rick talked about it earlier. 
the Silva's history is he throws strikes. The only mistake he made right there, Gary, was the fact that he wasn't thinking soft and he got himself behind in the count. Just too aggressive. He pulled off of that pitch, and you saw that his top hand came off of the bat. I like what he did there, but you've got to think soft first with the Silva on the mound. Five of seven first pitch strikes have been thrown. A good reason to come ready to hit. That'll be taken inside. One to one. Carlos Santana averages 94 walks in the first two seasons in the majors. He is one of the most patient hitters in all of baseball. He does not swing at bad pitches. 1 1 delivery off his foot. <laughs> Have a day, Carlos. Take one when you got the mask on and then hit yourself when you're hitting. Here comes your best friend again. He was just out to talk to you in the top of the first inning with that foul ball off of your left elbow. Now let's take a look at that right knee. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's right off the shin. And you know what we have seen hitters. I remember Jermaine die. Remember that when he fouled one off the shin just like that and it fractured the shin and he was never the same player. Santana may be saying you know I may want to rethink starting behind the plate in this game. Tony Pena who knows all about that a great catcher in his own day came out to have a word with his catcher. I mean this is right off the shin. This ball hits his shin harder than it would have if it just came out of the hand of the Silva. So Santana will stay back in a one ball two strike count on him. Nanita waiting on deck as a pitcher now Gary you're, you're, you're wanting to keep the ball out of the air. You've got to think at the knees or below that to try to get a ground ball. As a pitcher after a batter's done that. Change your strategy on what you're going to throw to him. Well, I'd like to come back in hard, but I mean, I think right now I throw harder than De Silva does. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't have the luxury of doing that. He cannot think anything hard in for a strike because of the power of Santana. He's got to try to expand the zone down below it. I like that breaking ball towards his back foot right now. Runners off first and second base, nobody out. And the one-two delivery, he went outside and will miss with it. And the count goes to two and two. You saw the encouragement there from catcher Drew Butera. That's exactly what he wanted there. But here you mentioned the patience of Carlos Santana, the walks that he's drawn. That was a terrific take right there. Very tough to get him to swing that bat if it's not the pitch he wants to go after. Two two. Wanted that one and will foul it away. So the count will stay. Two balls, two strikes. Ramirez at second, Cruz at first. I really think that the Dominican was shocked with the struggles, particularly with his control that Volquez had. There is no shock right now for Team Italy. They are not going to take a chance on anybody struggling. They have too many arms available down there in the bullpen. There's Bill Holmberg right there, who you can't give him enough credit for the scouting report he put together in the series in Arizona. Saw so Luca Panarotti down there warming up. 2 2 delivery again came inside, gets the pop up. Coming back, and there is Rome. And he's got it. Boy, is that a big out. Drew Butera puts it away. Umpires very busy traveling and doing a lot of games. Angel Hernandez, a veteran. Katsumi Manabe from Japan. Mark Wagner of the Major Leagues. And uh, Paul Hyam, who was down in uh, San Juan and did some umpiring there. I really think, Gary, that Angel Hernandez is one of the most improved umpires in the game. I thought he struggled a lot early in his career, but now on his resume are a couple of All Star games, a couple of World Series, and a World Baseball Classic. And first pitch hitting up in the air. Nanita goes to left field with it. Costanzo is there. He'll haul it in. After the first two got on, the next two have been retired. Not a very good at bat right there. You talk about keeping the line of moving, having good quality at bats, make him work to get in out. There's an off speed pitch on the outer half of the plate, and he just trying to pull that pitch, and he fell right into the trap that De Silva had set. So now the Dominican Republic 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position today. Diazo will get an opportunity. He had a very good first round. It's a really good player, fine defensive center fielder, good speed. Four for nine, three RBIs. 
in round one. The Silva trying to get out of the inning. A slower than slow off speed pitch and a good one. Good breaking ball right there to go along with that changeup. I love what they're doing defensively here, Gary. Look how deep they are in center and right field. Normal depth in left field because Diazza not with a lot of power in that direction, but they wouldn't mind giving up one run here. They don't want to give up a couple. Right at him. Rizzo's got it. That's the inning. No runs, two hits, no errors. Two are left on base. For the Dominican, they have left three on in the first two innings. We are proud to have the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One providing live coverage 1,500 feet in the air. MetLife Blimp provided a unique perspective for fans for over 25 years and thrilled to be a part of the 2013 World Baseball Classic as you get a look at Miami. That was Rick's boat you saw over there in the <laughs> intercoastal. They just cruise up and down waiting for him to get done. Then he goes back to the ship and the ball game's over. There's barely room for you and me on Rick's boat <laughs> down in southern Missouri where I grew up. Yeah, but it's got oars. <laughs> and, 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 and we'll catch some fish, I promise you. <laughs> Volquez will go back to work here in the top of the third inning. 4 1 0 oh for Italy, 0 oh, 3 and 0 oh for the Dominican. Three have been left on by the Dominican, none by Italia. Crescidorf, you drew a walk and scored in the first inning. As Edison Volquez walked the first three in the ball game and they all scored. Liddy had a sack fly. Delabello had the three RBI homer. To give Italy the very surprising early lead. Volquez 0 1 pitch towards the hole. Be a long throw. Reyes has got it. One away. Rick was talking about the uh, fairness of this ballpark. It's huge when you look at the numbers, but as you talked about, Gary, when the roof is open and that wind can circle, it does have a tremendous Gulf Stream going out to right center field and down the right field line. It plays a lot smaller than what those numbers are. When the roof is closed, this is a huge ballpark. There's times, though, it doesn't seem that way when you watch Giancarlo Stanton play baseball. And Rizzo drives that one in the air. Shielding his eyes. It'll be hauled in. The ass is there. Rizzo's retired. He too had a walk his first time up two away here in the third inning. Now you might wonder with Bocas struggling in the first inning, walking the first three guys, why aren't Team Italy more patient? Well, this isn't the part of the lineup that you want patience from. You've got two, three, and four. You've got really the only big league experience guy that you have. You trust them to go up there and do what they think's best. So after walking the first three in this ball game, Volquez has now retired seven in a row. He threw 25 pitches in the first inning. He threw nine in the second inning, and he's thrown four here in the third inning, and he's got two outs. Lydia had the sack fly RBI his first time up. That fastball is at the knees and therefore a strike. I really feel like when this game started, if you would have told Team Italy, we'll give you four runs for the nine innings, they would have taken it. But because of the lack of command from Bocas in that first inning, he's starting to sharpen up now. They might not score again. That is in there for a strike on a check swing. Liddy with the Seattle Mariners organization last year, 38 games with the big club. Had three home runs, 10 RBIs, hit 224. One ball, two strike count. Liddy will put that one up in the air. And not a lot of room into the seats. Gary, I, I, I saw him play back in 09. I've seen him play a little bit at the big league level for Liddy. This is the problem that he has that fastball on the inner half of the plate. When he hits it well, he can't keep it fair. And more times than not, he does not hit it. See how far out in front that he was there. He's a guy that's tremendous with his power when he can extend when there's something out over the plate, but he has not filled up that hole yet on the inner half. And the breaking ball is in the dirt. For Liddy, he is the first Italian born player to make it to the major leagues. He's from San Remo, Italy. That's his home. Well, you and I were together back in 09, and it was Mike Piazza that said he's going to play in the big leagues. This kid has a chance to be really good. 
Two ball, two strikeout. And a tailing pitch swung on foul tip held on to. So for Volquez, he's gone from 25 pitches to nine to eight to retire the side here in the third. Beautiful city and a lot going on here in an international cosmopolitan city, Miami, on the ocean on one side and the intercoastal waterway on the other. A 4 0 lead, Italy on top. As we go to the bottom of the third inning, the Dominican, the home team, and they have the top of the order. Here is Reyes. He'll take the pitch outside for a ball. Reyes now 0 for his last 11. After he went with four hits in his first four at bats in the first game in San Juan. He'll take that pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Take a look at this. The bullpen of Team Italy already up and going. I would imagine if there's anybody on base, it would be the left handed reliever coming in to face Robinson Cano already here in the third inning. And a strike on the outside corner. Reyes didn't like it. Reyes flied out to right field his first time up. Reyes with the Toronto Blue Jays and what's going to be one of the interesting stories of Major League Baseball and there'll be lots of them. That ball drilled down the line. Will it stay fair? It is. Goodbye. Home run. Off the fair pole. And that's the way you get rid of an over. And it's four to one. Obviously familiar with this ballpark. He had planned on spending the rest of his career here as a member of the Marlins. But when things fell apart last year, he moved on to the Toronto Blue Jays. The fans here in Miami getting an idea of what they're going to miss. One of the most exciting players still in the game of baseball. And Gary, what I love about him, I mean, he's still the, the same type of person that he was as a kid. Still has that same enthusiasm. Probably a little bit more power than what he did to begin with. So he puts him on the board. And how about that? I think that went through the wickets. It did. Reyes gets the home run. Ibar on the first pitch wanted to bunt, and the ball went between the wickets and right didn't hit him. Between his legs. What I don't understand is I mean, how did Butera catch that pitch? There for a moment, I know he couldn't see it. That's concentration. On both their parts. Some kind of catcher. Ibar popped out his first time up to Silva's pitch grounded towards second base. Nick Quinto's got it. Anyway. You mentioned that Jose Reyes back in 09 really struggled when the Dominican Republic was eliminated in the first round. Just one for nine. He had struggled up until that at bat after the first game in Puerto Rico. Something like that can get a guy going where you get to the point where you can't get him out anymore. Four home runs have been hit by the Dominican Republic so far in this World Baseball Classic. Ray is not one of those you would expect necessarily to do it. You would expect Robinson Cano to have a couple. He does have one. Cano's continued hot. He's hit in all four games. Got a double his first time up. 10 hits now and 16 at bats here in the World Baseball Classic for Robinson Cano. Cano may have to bat both third, cleanup, and second in the Yankee lineup in light of the players they're not going to have to start the season with injuries. Even more pressure on this great hitter. Grounded out to Rizzo, two away. So many amazing things about the career of. Robinson can know one thing a lot of times here that gets overlooked has been his durability. This guy's out there for 160 games every single year. And as Tony Pena was saying before the game during batting practice to us, he never complains, never talks about being tired, hurt, never wants a day off. Two down bases are empty. Aaron Canasi on a strikeout victim his first time up. The Silva comes in with a pitch that will miss inside for the ball. Four one ball game with Italy getting those runs early. We're in the bottom half of the third inning. Home run hitter at the plate. 
Finished fourth in the American League in home runs last season. 42. He had an OPS of 941. On base plus slugging OPS. One of my favorite stats. I think that tells a lot. And the pitch will catch the outside corner. De Silva coming across the body a little bit. Two ball, one strike count. That's what his delivery is all about is to create as much deception and hide the baseball as long as he can. Two ones going to miss down low. He's not walked anybody. He has struck out one. And Canacion will look for one to drive. Two down and nobody on. Thought he had it, popped it up. Shallow right, Punto, Rizzo. Rizzo wants it. And he's got it. So after the home run, retires three in a row. Reyes started the inning out with a long ball over a 10 year Major League career. He is at 92 Major League home runs, a season high 19. That was back in 2006 with the Mets. He gets one here in the World Baseball Club. Well, both ball clubs have used the long ball. The big blow of the ball game so far came in the first inning. A lot like what happened with Team Canada when they put off a mild upset against Team Mexico. Four runs in the top of the first inning. Mexico never recovered from that. I wonder if the Dominican can. Volquez up and in on that home run hitter. You know, we, uh, I don't know if you got to see it, but we had a little extracurricular activity in, uh, yeah. in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Canada taking exception to one of their guys getting drilled. There's no question that there was there was a message coming along with that baseball. Golabello six hits and a couple of home runs here in the classic. He has been their best hitter and now has driven in seven in the three plus games that he has played in their DH. Colabello has dual citizenship U.S. Italy. His mom was born in Naples. Italy not Florida. And a swing and a miss and a one ball two strike count. Really a, a great story about how he got signed last year was his first year at the professional level chasing another breaking ball here. It was kind of a friend of a friend got him an invitation and driving in runs was nothing new for what he did a year ago. That'll go to short. Stays down. Reyes will make the play. Colabello is retired. One down in the fourth inning. Thought it was kind of interesting, Gary. During batting practice, talking to Mike Piazza. He's got a beautiful home here, as you know. Uh, you know, married now, got kids. Going to have a big party for the coaching staff. Everybody over for dinner. I said, "Well, when is?" He says, "Tomorrow night." And I said, "You realize you, you might be playing tomorrow." Well, we don't we don't think we're going to be playing. That's why I've got the party planned. Of course they've got to win this ball yeah. game today to get the night off tomorrow. Exactly. That's believing. Pizza always believed. In at third base. Mike Costanzo is up. And uh, taking away the potential bunt Ramirez. Mike Costanzo grounded out his first time up now as a three for twelve. In the World Baseball Classic. Costanzo, of course, one of the better Italian league players. And when I was talking to Mike Piazza about Team Italy and what the World Baseball Classic means to it, he said, you know what, it's not about the Italian league. Those guys, their careers are already set. It's about having the money to build an academy over there to where these younger kids. And there's millions of them, he said, that don't have anything to do. He really thinks that it can help the game of baseball because of all the talent that is over there that's never been tapped into. That's what a lot of these countries, like Italy, are hoping for. That is the fourth walk that has been surrendered by Edison Volquez in the ball game. What happens, the Two winners of today's games, the U.S. plays the Dominican tonight. They face off against one another, and the losers play tomorrow against one another in what's an elimination game. 
It's a modified round robin play here in the second round. Not like the first round where everybody in each pool played one another. Runners going, hit and run was on, and it is fouled off. Well, I absolutely love this. Marco Mazzieri, the manager of Team Italy, did everything right in the series out there in Phoenix. And look at this. He just gave up a run on the home run to Reyes in the bottom of the third. Said, boys, let, 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 let me help you out here a little bit. Putting the game in motion, you're down to the bottom part of the order. Normally you don't get much offense from down there without help from the skipper. The tear up waiting on deck for Team Italy. One strike out with one out. Runner not going and again out in front of it and fouls it off. Here he popped out his first time up to the plate. Super Mario. Remember that catch he made. The ball hit by Bobby Abreu back in 09 in that World Baseball Classic. I'm not going to say it's the best catch I've ever seen. I will say I've never seen one better. It was an outstanding play. He's back. This is his second World Baseball Classic from Italy. 0 2 delivery on the way he waited on it gets a chopper. There's one at second. Volquez relay to first and won't be. Reyes took a look, had no chance, so they'll get the force out in the comeback or two down. I don't even think with the great arm of, of Jose Reyes, if Volquez would have made a perfect throw, you're, you're going to double up Chiarini going down that line. Ball just seemed to be in the air a little bit too longer, and then when the bad throw pulled Reyes slightly off the bag, he had to make sure he got the one out instead of worrying about the double play. Little Olay play there at second base. And there are two down. Here's Butera. He was a strikeout victim his first time up. I like trying to run here again, Gary. Foul that back. Runner wasn't going. Pretty good cut put on by Butera. Well, that would be part of scrapping, wouldn't it? I mean, that's what Mike Piazza said the bottom part of the order's got to do for Italy is find a way. Got to scrap your way through. You know, some people might say, well, where, you want to get back to the top of the order. Well, I, I don't agree with that. That's not a great offensive top of the order. This is an opportunity to score if you can get him to second base. Runner not going here. Ball up the middle. Reyes over to get it. He'll make the flip and a close play at second base. Cano there to get it. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. We'll be going to the bottom half of the fourth inning. Game one of two to be played here in Miami today. Italy leads it. We are back as we go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Team Italy up four to one. Let's take a look at how this inning ended there with the hard slide from Mario Chiarini. Robinson Cano taking a look back. Chiarini says, sorry about that. I overslid the bag a little bit, but that's what we saw out in Phoenix, Gary, during that first round. I mean, everybody running the bases as hard as they possibly can. No matter what may be said about now the don't want to have injuries and players are careful about that amongst themselves. As the game gets going, it's a baseball game. It was, and he had a chance to beat that out. And yeah. I mean, it was a close play. I love seeing hustle. I know you agree. Yeah, and I've seen that. I, I, I wasn't in Phoenix with you, but down in uh, San Juan, with all four teams that played there, there was great effort. I mean, guys were running out the ground balls to first base, sliding hard, trying to take the extra base. You know, the game was being played right. Check swing and a pitch, and did he go? Look to first base, no. Ramirez had a single his first time up. Ramirez Cruz and Carlos Santana. This is a situation where, as a pitcher, they'll tell you to see how far he can hit it. You got to be taking on the 3 0 pitch. Just play catch. Just simply lob it down the middle. There you go. Now, on this one here, you either add a little bit, which the Silva has a hard time doing or you subtract a little bit take four or five miles an hour off of this pitch in the same location and see if the hitter doesn't get himself out. You've got to throw a strike. You can't walk him. Yeah I to Silva will come inside with it and he does surrender the walk. It is his first of the ball game and a leadoff walk in the inning. Fans be sure to visit worldbaseballclassic.com and bookmark it as your one stop source for news, video highlights, and online shopping for authentic jerseys, caps, collectibles, and more. 24 7, you can gear up 
as you support your team by wearing the official colors of your country. That's WorldBaseballClassic.com on the computer, tablet, or smartphone. Well, their team's not here, but the fans are. Venezuela. De Silva, the starter, has thrown 13 pitches in each of the first three innings of this ball game, so he started with 39 in the inning. He can go as high as 80. He has done it the hard way the last three innings, including this one. The leadoff man has reached base for the Dominican. Ramirez on here with a walk. He singled to lead off the second. And uh, Reyes led off the third with a home run. Second time up in the bullpen. Sidearms that one. It'll be in there for a strike. Cruz a single his first time up. I think the message was real simple from pitching coach Bill Holmberg. Give me everything you got in this at bat because it's going to be the last hitter that you face. Which hit a Carlos Santana waiting on deck. And that'll miss down low. Cruz now with a six for 14 in the World Baseball Classic with the hit that he has added in this ball game. He's had hits in all four of the WBC games he's been in this year. Ramirez off first base, 1 1. Off speed breaking ball will miss. You know, Gary, one of the things that we saw in Arizona too was just outstanding defense on the part of Team Italy. And it all starts to me with the positioning to begin with. They respect the fact here that Cruz has got a lot of speed. They have speed in the outfield. Excuse me, Cruz has a lot of power. They're just trying to cut off the gaps right now. They're trying to keep him from hitting a double. The infield back as far as it can. I love the fact that they're doing that. They're not trying to just get the double play. They're trying to just help De Silva pick up the out. Two ball, one strike count. Runner not going. Just couldn't wait long enough on that one. Two and two. And like you said earlier, he created a little different arm angle. Watching drop down on this pitch, creating a little bit more deception with that delivery. Look at the angle that he releases that pitch in. It looks good, looks good, but it just never quite gets there. Two ball, two strike count on Cruz from the Texas Rangers. And went outside with that real good pitch. Circled it short. They get the lead runner. Nice play. Anthony Granado, the shortstop, had a hustle to get Ramirez at second, but he does. Well, we saw this throughout the W World Baseball Classic. The, the, the infield defense, there's the change up on the outer half, not hit hard enough to double up. But you look at Granado there, how he comes up with it, takes another step to make the throw. But I love what Punto did there. Even though he was at second base, he played it like a first baseman. He squared up just to make the throw that much easier to give him more range so that they make sure they got the first one. So they swap runners at first base. Cruz over there now. And here's Santana popped out his first time up. And that is in there for a strike. Only one error has been committed by Team Italy in the first three and a half ball games that they have played here in this World Baseball Classic. It has been for the most part an error free classic. I'm a little bit surprised that the Silva's getting the opportunity to face Santana again. Well, this inside there, he popped him up the first time, up one one. Yeah, but I, I think Santana got himself out more so than De Silva made a great pitch. I might have turned him around to that right side, knowing that you're going to bring the left-handed reliever in to face the next two left-handed hitters for the Dominican team. One ball, one strike count. Santana, most of the times he's come to the plate, has had the starter in the stretch and has had a lot of his own colors out there on the field. Amazingly, 14 have been left on base in this tournament when he's been to the plate, including two in the first inning of this game. 1 1 delivery, grounded down to first. There's one, got a tag, they'll get him in a rundown. Back to first, tag put on. There's your double play. And again, 
Piazza yeah, said we cannot beat ourselves. We have to make plays. We can't extend innings. Well, these are the kind of plays to get that done. Well, and Anthony Rizzo talking about you don't always have to get a hit to have a great ball game. He just turned a great double play to get out of the bottom of the four. 3-6-3 ends at 4-1 Italy. Marlins Park in Miami, Florida, and a great view with the roof open. Italy's got the 4-1 lead in the ball game. New ballpark. We get a little toasty during the game. You might want to take a little dip. And then they can join in the club that's out there in left center field, the Clevelander. Why aren't we doing the game from down there this afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> and there's that Art Deco out there in center. As you notice, I did not answer Rick's question. <laughs> Carelessly avoiding it at all costs. A good chance we wouldn't get through the first inning. And a strike on the inside corner. I don't think you can see from the pool, that's why. I didn't think that Edison Focas was going to get through the first <laughs> inning either. Different reason. And a ground ball towards the middle. Handled cleanly. Harris makes the play. Anthony Granado retired. He is 0 for 2. One down here in the fifth inning. How about you, Gary? But I really feel like for Team Italy to win this ball game, they, they still need to score. I just don't feel like that they don't have the shutdown type bullpen that Tony Pena has over there for the Dominican Republic. I feel like offensively, they need to get some more activity going. And to do that for them, it's normally going to come from this part of the lineup. Top of the order, Nick Punto. They've had only one base runner since the first inning, and that was a walk in the fourth. And that's the only base runner they left on. Ball game started with three consecutive walks by Edison Volquez, the Punto, the Norfia and Rizzo, and they all scored. Liddy had the RBI and a sack fly. Colabello delivered the three run homer. That's all in the first. And those are the four runs on the board for Italy. You know, Gary, even though the starting pitcher can go up to 80 pitches in this round, we were told before the game Edison Volquez is not one of those guys. Especially since he could only go that first inning in game one. He didn't get stretched out at all in that ball game. And I'm not allowed to say that I was told by manager Tony Pena. I'm you not, weren't. I'm not, I did not say that. Mm -mm. But he's looking at anywhere 65 to 70 being, being the lid. That's the max that he's going to take a chance on with the San Diego Padres right hand. I think Tony would like to get him through this inning here in the fifth inning. That would probably be it. That's going to go down for a base hit into left field. Anita will play it back in. Nick Quinto's on for the second time. He's one for two in the ball game. He has singled and walked. Years ago, when Nick Punto played for manager Tom Kelly, he called him a pain in the rear. And he said he's not a pain to me. He's just a pain to the opposing pitchers. And, and that's the typical reason right there. Five, six pitches at, at bat every time he's up there. You make a good pitch, you throw a good breaking ball down, and he just finds enough of it. To put the ball in play, and every now and then it falls in for a hit. Real good contact hitter. And here's the meeting at the mound now, and Pena going out himself. He wants to know from Volquez, where are we? Well, it's the same kind of thing I believe that Bill Holmberg did when he went out to De Silva. This is your last guy. There's a left handed hitter and the best hitter by far for Team Italy in the on deck circle. Tony Pena, as he should, has a left handed reliever ready to go. So he's going to tell Volquez right now look, if you're okay. If you're fine, I'm going to leave you in. But give me everything you've got to this last hitter. Angel Hernandez, home plate umpire, will come out to break it up. And Volquez will stay on the mound at least for the moment. Runner on at first base with one away. Kristen Orfia coming up. On what pitch does he send the runner? Marco Mazzieri has proven he's not afraid to take a chance. Above average speed at first. You got a guy that can handle the bat at home plate. See if he goes. He does not. Pitch will be outside for a ball. Dorofio with the San Diego Padres. 130 games with him last year. He hit 293, eight home runs, and 36 RBIs. 
been a solid hitter at the major league level. 281 career average in 440 major league games. There's the throw over to get Puno back. Gary, and one thing that we know, the Norfia knows Edison Volquez better than anybody. Yep. Most of the time he's going to be the center fielder. He's got a great look at his teammate during the regular season, the past season. 1 0 count, 1 away. Runner will stay. The Northfield lines up. That's going to be a base hit into right field. Cruz up, runner going. Cruz is going to nine. Here's the throw to third. Cut off, not in time. And the Northfield's on, two on, one down for Italy. Tony Pena possibly leaving Volquez in for one hitter too many. Another ball hit extremely hard. Look at the Norfi and the professional at bat hitting behind the runner. And I love the fact that Nick Punto, when he saw that ball get by him, that's all he needed to see. He did not need a third base coach. He knows that Cruz is out there. Cruz has got a good arm, but he also realizes with just one out, I've got to try to get the third base. So they have chased the starter team Italy has as they come away with a couple of hits here with one down the top of the order the table setters we talked about earlier have set the table again with the middle of that order coming up. We'll see how the bullpen now will get it done for the Dominican. Here's your line on Edison Volquez the big first inning cost him dearly he's gave up only three hits with four runs. 64 pitches and two base runners on that are his responsibility. 27 year old left hander Juan Cedeno comes on to pitch to Rizzo. He goes after the first pitch. Cedeno really started to put it together a year ago. You see the perfect record 3 0, 53 appearances, that being in AAA. With some guys, Gary, as you know, it, it takes a little bit longer, but. This guy certainly has the big leagues in his future. Yankee organization. Rizzo will take it down low. Nice block made to hold the runner, Santana. After the ground ball out, Mundo and the North here are on, one away. Well, just another bruise for Santana to deal with when this game's over. We got the left elbow, we got the right shin, and now it looks like what is it, that, that, the left wrist there that yeah. Black and blue day and only halfway through the ball game for Carlos Santana. Juan Cedeno at triple A three and oh four saves two eight one ERA last year came up in the Boston organization. He's been with the Royals Dodgers Tigers and now the Yankees late on that he got fooled and had a late swing. Boy he really did. And if he's not able to drive in that run from third he's going to look back at that pitch right there as the reason why. I think he just got a little bit long when all he had to do was put the barrel of the bat on that and he's so big and strong worst case scenario that would have been a sack fly. Now a one ball two strike count. Rizzo reaching goes down swinging. He hit only 208 against left handers last year. And did not get the cuts he wanted there, and that's going to be it for Sedeno. Well, Tony Pena got exactly what he wanted. He had the left hander ready to go. He knew that he had a good breaking ball, and the report says that that was the pitch Rizzo struggled with. An outstanding job of managing. Watch well, the reaction, Sedeno. Obviously, very big runs anytime Italy can get somebody in scoring position in this ball game. First and third. Now there were two down. Right hander will come up. An ocean drive in Miami, where round two is being played. Not an ocean drive, but Miami. <laughs> Probably been a lot of round twos played there, but not this one. <laughs> a lot of second rounds have been brought there, I'll tell you that. <laughs> North Beach, South Beach. Miami Beach coconut Grove. it just puts a smile on your face when you, you get off the plane in this town there's just so much to do. Well to do right here is to try and find it out a 35 year old right handed veteran Lorenzo Barcelo and he's crafty more so than some of the other arms that Tony Pena could have brought in from his pen doesn't throw nearly as hard outstanding command a good breaking ball and not afraid to pitch in which we have learned is what you have to do with Alex Liddy.
first and third two down. And the pitch is there for a strike. Marcello appeared in two games in the first round. He worked three innings, gave up a run on 11 on one hit and 11 at bats. Throws a lot of off speed stuff. Liddy has an RBI and a sack fly, and he has struck out. Two singles with one away had set the stage. Now there are two down, and that's in there for a strike. What a great command. After that breaking ball for strike one, he throws that two seam moving fastball, which looked to be off the plate away, but watch it come back to catch the outer half. Now you want to put him away with either your strength or his weakness. Marcelo's strength is breaking ball in the dirt. Liddy's weakness is the fastball on the hand. Here's the 0-2 delivery to him. It's a breaking ball that's going to get a short. Reyes will go to second base. Cano is there. And a chance for Italy that goes by the boards. Credit the pitchers for the Dominican getting it done. No runs, two hits, no errors. Two are left on base. Italy remains surprisingly ahead 4-1. Here in Miami today as the Kingdom of the Netherlands and Japan wait to see who their opponents will be in San Francisco. Round two of the classic continues here the U.S. and Puerto Rico tonight. It'll be Mario Santiago for Puerto Rico and Gio Gonzalez for the U.S. broadcast at 8 Eastern 00, 0 GMT time. Scheduled game here at Marlins Park tonight. And uh, the pitch will be taken outside. Ricardo Nanita leading it off. Nanita Diaz in the top of the order. Reyes. Gio Gonzalez did not play for Team U.S. in the first round. Added to the roster, and he is from Florida, from Hialeah, right around Miami here. So he'll be on the mound with family and friends watching him pitch tonight. Boy, what a thrill that's got to be! But he too, like Edison Volquez, early in the game, going to have to control that adrenaline. De Silva's gone the distance for Team Italy and has gotten it done. He gave up a home run to Reyes in the third, has walked one, struck out one, and given up that run on just four hits to a very powerful Dominican lineup. Boy, his manager showing a lot of confidence in him. Back to back left handed hitters due up for the Team Dominican. Got him. Team Dominican. Their hitters going away. They look back out there going, what's going on? Boy, just not a very good at bat right there. I, I don't feel like that was strike three to begin with, but just showing a little bit of the pressure that's starting to build, Gary, as this game goes on for the heavily, heavily favored Dominican Republic. So there's one down. Here's Diazza. He lined out his first time up to first base. He's got a three game hit streak coming in. De Silva continues to throw strikes. The Dominican hitters continue to step out once in a while, hoping that uh, he might start missing the strike zone, but he has not done that in this game. Here's the 0 1 delivery on the way, and that's a strike on the inside corner. Nice pitch. And Diaz kind of backs off, shaking his head. Yes, that was there. Gary we talked about it right off the bat in the top of the first inning the key for team Italy was to do what they did to get here. Their pitching staff has to be aggressive early in the strike zone they are and the Dominican Republic hasn't figured it out yet. And a swing and a miss. The Silva gets his third strikeout two in a row. Nothing different than what he did in the previous at bat with Nanita. It's that good straight change up. He tries to expand the zone and another poor at bat by the Dominican. They're starting to feel it, Gary. Yeah, the pressure's on a little bit now for a ball club that was supposed to walk away in this game, trailing by a score of four to one, long way to go. And they certainly have the bats to be able to come back, but it does get a little frustrating and all of a sudden not as easy, I think, as they thought it might be. Where's the adjustment? This is the third time around for the lineup. That first pitch is going to be a strike. That one will miss away. Reyes the home run third inning is first of the classic.
getting himself out of an offer that he'd been in after flying out his first time up in the ball game. He is now five for 16 in the classic. One ball, one strike delivery. A speed pitch. Oh, what a scoop made Rizzo. And they record the out. There's a defensive play that shortens everything. He told us before the game, you don't always have to get a hit to have a great game. Rizzo having a great game, even though he still does not have a hit. And De Silva had to get over there in a hurry to cover. That's an outstanding play. The first one, two, three inning for De Silva. Some collectibles for you as we return here to Miami in our coverage of the World Baseball Classic. Team Italy on top by a score of four to one. And the pitch will be taken inside by Colabello, who delivered the home run in the first inning. Good for three RBIs. He is grounded out. Costanzo on deck. Marcello, the right hander out of the bullpen, came in the last inning and will stay on here. So Edison Volquez, the starter for the Dominican. Lasted four and a third innings, charged with all four of the runs on three hits, two strikeouts, and four very big walks. In the first inning, he walked the first three batters, did not throw a strike, and they all scored. One one delivery that'll be fisted back. I know he stands right now to get the loss, but thinking about the outing for Volquez. He went back out there the second inning and beyond. The breaking ball for a strike. The velocity's back to the mid 90s. He won 11 games last year for San Diego. I look for that number to go up. 1 2 delivery, the off speed pitch he protects on. Colabello with the Minnesota Twins organization. Last year, Double A New Britain hit 284, 19 homers, 98 RBIs. He went to college, uh, Assumption College in Massachusetts. I've never heard of it. Never heard of it? Big baseball program, huh? No. A very good academic school. And actually their baseball program is pretty good. It's a tier two or three. I don't know which now. Pitch will be taken inside. He wasn't drafted and ended up going to the Canadian League where somebody finally saw him. 134 games and 98 RBIs. Yeah. Three run homer should not be much of a surprise. Yeah. Colabella will take it down low. And Barcelo is struggling here with a strike zone, which, if he has a problem, this will be it. Despite his size, he is more of a finesse pitcher, not a power pitcher, and trying to find that strike zone sometimes becomes a problem. 3 2 delivery on the way gets it in, and that will be foul back. This is some kind of an at bat right here. This has all of the signs of a guy that's ready to produce at the big league level. That's a 3 2 slider that's on the outside corner, and yet he was not completely fooled to where he could not get a piece of it. We saw him hit the fastball out. That was a mistake, and he jumped all over it. This is a big league at bat here. Eighth pitch of the at bat, and if he went, he's out. He didn't, he walks. So there's a leadoff walk here in the sixth inning. Italy wants some more runs. Let's see if they can get them here. And we are proud to have the MetLife Blimp Snoopy One providing live coverage 15 feet above. The MetLife Blimp provided a unique perspective for fans for over 25 years. Thrilled to be part of the 2013 World Baseball Classic. Great pilots, mechanical engineers, ground crew making today's spectacular aerial coverage possible as you look in. Great to have the roof open with the blimp up overhead. You get a really great shot of what it looks like. I wonder who they're going to get up in the blimp down here in Miami. As you know, in, in Phoenix, Ken Griffey Jr. had the opportunity to do it and said he absolutely loved it. Everybody wants to take that ride. I'm available. <laughs> the attorneys from MetLife <laughs> frown a bit on it. <laughs> Costanzo at the plate, ground ball towards first. Nice stop made, and Canesione. There's one relay. Oh, got him! How about that? Marcelo got over to cover, and they turned the unlikely two. 
The only way they're going to get that turn is because of the arm strength of Jose Reyes. Nice diving stop comes up with it gets rid of it right on the money and look at that he couldn't get his momentum going towards first with the stride because his legs are going to be taken out from underneath him. Just all he can do is step off to the side and wing it. I did not think that the double play was completed but the call was made. I still got him safe. Yep. Probably but they get the benefit and the effort worked. And a good play by Marcelo to get over there to cover. So there are two down. Takes that leadoff walk away. Irini has popped out and hit into a fielder's choice. Two of the strongest arms in infield in the majors exist in this ball game with Reyes and Cano. Be hard pressed to find middle infielders who can throw the baseball any harder and from more awkward angles accurately than do these two. I think Cano I, I'm hard pressed to find to think of another second baseman Rick as strong on the pivot play as he is but there, there's one that comes to mind from years ago remember Manny Trio yep and I don't even think it was as strong as this one but close Ramirez makes the play only three come up the good D that time of the Dominican and still Italy four, Dominican one. Underway with De Silva staying on the mound for Italy has gone the distance. Boy, what a job he's done! A walk, three strikeouts. He's held the Dominican to a run on four hits and protected the four runs that were picked up by Italy in the very first inning. He will bounce that one in as Ibar's up, Cano, and then on Canacion. He's pretty well divided up how he's gotten them out. Gary, the biggest reason for his success, along with that, is the fact that he has thrown strikes, particularly first pitch strikes, unlike what he's doing here in the bottom of the sixth. 2 0 delivery on the way, and that is on the inside corner for a strike. Eric Ibar, the designated hitter, switch hitter, a couple of hits and 11 at bats in the classic so far. In at third base is Liddy. He does try bunt and he fouls it off. Trying to get on by laying it down, two and two. He's not going to overpower you. Nobody would talk about his fastball before the game. The outstanding changeup, good command of his breaking ball. We've seen both of that. Let's see now if he goes with that straight change up with the late movement down and away to try to get another left handed hitter out. I bar making him wait a minute. There's the wiggle. Just missed outside. Boy, that's a that's a big league take right there. He stares in. He wanted that call. This is how you hit 290 almost 300 in the big leagues is knowing that that pitch is just off the outside corner. Not many do. Three ball two strike count. And he throws a strike and jammed him. Murphy comes on puts it away. I bar is retired. Nice comeback by De Silva. What an outstanding call on the part of Butera as well. Gary, they have really been in sync. Very seldom has De Silva shaken him off. Look at this. That's a fastball, but look at where it's located. After the changeup just off the outside corner. All right, he's going to stay back. He's looking off speed. We're going to give him the best heater that we've got. We're going to try to locate it, and he does exactly what was needed again. He was right on the mitt, wasn't he? Right where the target was. One away. There's Robinson Cano. He has doubled and grounded out. We are in the sixth inning. If Italy was to upset the Dominican Republic it would be the biggest upset of the World Baseball Classic so far. They just were not expected to make it. Number one to this round and number two against the Dominican they came into this game as heavy underdogs. Tom Treblehorn former major league manager closest to you there one of the coaches.
Tom's been around Major League Baseball a long time. Fine manager, very knowledgeable, and has helped work this team from the bench. Pitch will be taken away, one on one. As you mentioned earlier, Gary, the rules have changed for round two of the World Baseball Classic. 65 pitches would have been the max for De Silva in the first round. He can now go up to 80, which means he's got at least 10 left. 1 1 delivery on the way. No nope. foul. The pitch count rules for the World Baseball Classic really matter. Uh, what's great about this, you see that he's not going to be able to pitch for at least four days. But by going as deep as he has into this ball game, it just means that the next time out for Team Italy, whether it's tomorrow or whether it's on Thursday, that bullpen is going to be that much stronger. Really starting to frustrate the hitters from the Dominican who are backing out, taking a long time. Cano just kind of nubbed that last one off. And a timeout asked for. The Silva steps off. Not one time, Gary, have I seen them out of position defensively. Look at the right side of the infield because of the off speed pitches the Silva throws. Look at how deep those guys are playing. I mean, on a ground ball to third base, it'll be all that Anthony Rizzo could do to get to the bag in time for the throw. But it's more importantly for him to be set up than it is for him to be comfortable on anything else. Tremendous job by Team Italy. Here's the 2 2 delivery on the way. Cano puts it in the air to right field. He got all of it. Way back and goodbye. Home run. Cano gets his second homer of the WBC, and it is a 4 2 game. The facing of the upper deck in right center field. We thought the ball that Chris Corabello hit went a long ways. This baseball could have taken aerial photos of where Corabello's ball came down. What a tremendous blast. And what could possibly be exactly what the team from the Dominican Republic needed it. There was no doubt about that in anybody's mind. And Cano will get the silver out of the ball game with that homer. And as Rick said, maybe open it up for the Dominican Republic. He got all of it, but boy, what a job by De Silva, who comes out of the ball game. It is now up to the bullpen, but he has given his team from Italy a chance to win this game. Home runs mattering in this game. That is the first hit for the Dominican since the homer by Reyes in the third. It is Cano's second home run, knocking De Silva out of the ball game, making it a 4 2 game. And De Silva just wanted to get through that inning so badly. Cano just as badly wants to be the leader on a Dominican team that gets the WBC championship. Here, as you mentioned, though, Tiago De Silva has absolutely nothing to be ashamed of. Robinson Cano did that 33 times last year at the big league level. De Silva was in a situation where he had to throw strikes. His job was not to walk anybody. And he gave Team Italy everything that he had. Now it'll be the bullpen. Nicholas Pugliese will come on to do the pitching from Bologna. He's a member of the Angels organization pitched with the Arizona Angels and Rancho Cucamonga last year combined nine and seven three saves and a three nine six ERA in ninety four games in the Angels system and then you saw the numbers he had in Bologna. Gary he's a strike thrower and that has been the plan all along that is what Marco Mazzari wanted to put on his staff when he came into this tournament. Strike on the inside corner on Canacion is struck out and popped out. Decent breaking ball, a lot of life to that fastball. You saw Butera had a little trouble catching that last one. 
but he too has an outstanding swing and miss changeup. The Aces delivery. Breaking ball away for the Dominican now two runs on five hits. Italy still has the lead for two four runs on three hits for them each team has left three on base and the fans ignited here for the Dominican on the Cano home run. Here's the two one delivery. Out front grounded off worthy of note Robinson Cano there were two things that happened for the Dominican before they played one game Tony Pena closed the clubhouse every player had to stand up and say what are you doing here. He wanted an answer of we've come to win. After they'd done that Cano stood up and said the reason we struggled the last two World Baseball Classics me my fault I didn't do what I was supposed to do I didn't do the job. He is getting it done for the Dominican this year. That's going to go to left center field of a set. Then over to get it he'll make the turn and stay. And can on his own. And because of one swing of the bat by Robinson Cano. The opportunity to have the tying run in the on deck circle existed. And now with Encarnacion getting on base, that tying run is represented by Hanley Ramirez. This is an absolute bullet. Missed his location, which is not something we've seen a lot of, but he too, like on the home run to Robinson Cano, knew that that ball was trouble. You can see the fire has been lit. The juices are flowing over there for the Dominican Republic. And you know where it came from to me? It came from their fans. Because their fans have been in shock up until Robinson Cano did what he did. Now they once again are starting to believe. Ramirez a single and he has drawn a walk. Six hits now for the Dominican. Slider's going to miss outside for a ball. The Yazis a lot more conventional. And what I mean by that is it's a lot more of a look that this team from the Dominican Republic would see during the regular season. The AZ fastball going to miss inside and will fall behind 2 0. Good effort right there on the part of Priyazi, but an even better take on the part of Hanley Ramirez. Those guys, Gary, that drive in runs year in, year out, like Hanley Ramirez used to be, they have the ability in this situation to slow it down, to zero in on just what they want to swing at. 2 0 delivery. And that's inside 3 0. There's no doubt in my mind that the green light is on. Andy Ramirez does not even need to look down at the third base coach. But he will make that decision. He sees that the pitcher is struggling right now. He may decide, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make him throw a strike. Even though with a mistake, if I square it up, the game is tied. He's had a couple of hits in the classic, one a home run. 3 0 delivery on the way to him, and a strike call. This Dominican team came in hitting 324, third best average. Cuba had the best average. Of course, they're out of the classic. Italy, the team playing here, had the second best batting average. And a little concern now about pitching. Uh, try and shut down this Dominican team and not let them get on a roll here in the sixth. Cannot send the runner here. 3 1 delivery side on, but down to third. Knocked down. Liddy up throws and did not get him. A big call. And Canacion hustles to second and is safe. I saw a little bit of pressure turning into panic on the part of Alex Liddy there. That is the ground ball you're looking for to turn the double play with. But instead, he did not properly position himself. This ball's hit on the ground. To me, he did not have to dive. 
He could have simply taken a couple of steps come up with it and then when he did bobble it the throw has to go to first base. Tremendous job on the part of Encarnacion hustling down the line to beat the throw but absolutely the wrong direction that that throw went on the part of Alex Liddy. So the Dominican now with runners on at first and second base a run in and only one away. That's the kind of hustle we were talking about earlier that we've seen throughout the World Baseball Classic. It makes such a difference in a ball game. Just a little discussion here to try and slow things down. Streaky was the first word that Tony Pena used when he described the hitter stepping into the box right now, Nelson Cruz. What kind of a streak is he on right now? Is it like the first at bat where he lined a single or the second at bat where he hit a ground ball to short? Ramirez reaches on the fielder's choice at first base. First and second, one away. Cruz goes after it and fouls it off. Out in front of the pitch. That's not the good one. As far as Tony Payne was concerned, because Nelson Cruz pulled off of this pitch. Look at him, he was too quick. Even if it would have been a mistake on a ball that was up in the zone. Even if he would have hit it hard in that direction he's not going to be able to keep it fair. Cruz with the Rangers career high in doubles last year 45 and a career high 90 runs batted in. Here's the 0 1 delivery a look back. One of the problems for the Dominican even though they are 3 and 0 in classic play has been their numbers with runners in scoring position. They came in with a 275 number for the first three games. They are 0 for 4 with runners in scoring position today. Their runs of course coming on the solo home runs. Here's the 0 1 delivery. Got him to go after a pitch maybe away but good location 0 and 2. Gary you're exactly right. Those were two pitchers pitches that Nelson Cruz went after. And now you just you try to go to his weakness. His weakness has been that breaking ball off the outside corner. But if you make a mistake and you leave it on the inner half of the plate. Team Italy could find themselves behind. Here's the 0 2 delivery and got him. That was not a very good at bat Gary. And Nelson Cruz would be the first one to tell you he basically got himself out. Here's the breaking ball. It's just off the outside corner. The count right now should be at least two and one possibly three and zero. Oh. a hitters count and an opportunity for Cruz to do something. But he couldn't slow it down. He was way over anxious and pretty much just got himself out. Now the switch hitting catcher. Carlos Santana coming up. And Canacion remains at second base. Ramirez at first. Santana has popped out and hit into a double play. And Canacion get on with a single. Ramirez on that fielder's choice. So 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position for a team Dominican. Italy trying to make a four run first inning stand up in this ball game. Nothing wrong with what Puyese is doing right there. You might think he's feeling the pressure. No he's not. All he's trying to do is keep the runner at second base a step or two closer than what he would be without paying attention to him. What that does is on a sharp base hit to the outfield it gives your outfield an opportunity to maybe throw somebody out at home. Tense moment of the ball game and another big moment of the game. Silver the starter out of there a couple of runs five hits five and a third innings a walk three strikeouts. The easy on the mound in relief. Santana waiting pitches outside for a ball. Well, 
once again defensively. I really like what Team Italy's doing. The outfield as deep as they can possibly be, and the reason for that is to keep the runner at first base to tie and run from scoring on a gapper. Timeout asked for at the plate. You're seeing a little more of this done. Robinson Cano before he hit the home run in this inning did this. Santana's doing it. A little cat and mouse being played here, but Dominican Republic saying, no, you're going to wait on us. Just trying to gain a little edge, upsetting players with Italy who may not have as much experience. Here's the 1 0 delivery on the way, way outside, 2 0. Seems to be working. Yeah. And that would tell me that you would like to see a little bit more of it if you're the Dominican Republic. He's also paying more attention to Encarnacion than I think he should. I agree with giving it the inside move once in a while to see if he's going to maybe pick him off or keep him close. But once you decide to go to home, 100% of your focus has to be on the pitch. Here's the 2 0 delivery and not close. And the count goes to 3 0. I'll tell you what I'm seeing right now, Gary, is that he's looking back at the runner at second, but then as he's looking to home, everything's happening at once. He needs to turn. Look at home plate and then start his delivery to try to make a quality pitch. He, he, he's got himself caught right in the middle now. Every time Santana comes up, somebody's on. He had two on when he came up, popped out in the first inning, and somebody else in the fourth inning hit into the double play with the opportunity, and now he's got another chance here. 3 0 pitch taken for a strike. Santana has left 14 runners on base in his at bats here in the classic. And nobody knows that more than he does. Yeah. And nobody wants to end that right here more than he does. And he's got the ability to do that. Three ball, one strike count, runners off first and second base. And they're loaded. The AZ surrenders the walk to load him up with two down. Well, there's nowhere to put the guy at home plate. And you're struggling with your command as he did in that last at bat. You give the manager no choice. But don't forget, it was a play not made at third base by Alex Liddy that has continued this inning. And with a base hit now, gives the opportunity for the Dominican. To tie up this ball game. Go to the bullpen for the second reliever in the game. Italy getting those runs in the first inning with the first three hitters walked. Then Colabello hitting the home run. Reyes and Robinson have responded with home runs of their own for the Dominican. Diego De Silva, the starter. A great job for Italy, but now it's up to the bullpen. And the Dominican threatening with the bases loaded two down trailing 4 2. Well and when you looked at Team Italy before the World Baseball Classic began Gary you knew that that was a major weakness for them. Particularly trying to find a way to bridge a possible lead to their closer Jason Grilly. And we're looking at Danny Gonzalez the hitting coach for the Dominican Republic team giving the scouting report to Miguel Tejada who is the pinch hitter. The veteran Tejada. Coming off the bench for Nanita, who had an 0 for 2. Tejada likes to swing hard and from his heels. 38 years old, did not play last year, vying for a position with the Royals this year. Left hander's pitch to him will be inside for a ball. Pat Venditti on the mound right now. He is the guy who, when healthy, can throw both left and right hand, but designated as only a left hander in this tournament. Sacks are full. Two down. 1 0 delivery. Tejada puts it in the air to right field. It's playable, and this inning is over. Hiarini is there to haul it in, retiring the side, and there'll be only one run, a couple of hits, and the bases are left loaded. And oh, the second batter up delivered the second home run for the Dominican. Reyes has the other. That made it a 4 2 game, and that's where we are after six.
Telecast presented by authority of the World Baseball Classic Inc. may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Gary Thorne, Rick Sutcliffe, and all the excitement of the World Baseball Classic here in Miami. Seventh inning with Italy holding on to that 4 2 lead in this game. Just amazing. Well, you say Sierra's come out to play in left field defensively. And that pitch will be taken inside for a ball. Marcelo is out. Pedro Strope of the Orioles is on. And he can flat get it up there in a hurry. You know a lot more about him, Gary, than I do. One of the really good arms coming out of that bullpen for the Dominican. Throws hard, has good sink. Be a good ground ball pitcher when he's on. Two ball, one strike count. A setup man for the Orioles last year. Behind Jim, the uh, head of Jim Johnson, the closer who had a great season, and Strope was part of the reason why. Here's the 2 1 pitch that'll be inside. I agree with Rick still what you said a couple of innings ago that Team Italy needs a couple more runs. We're just two thirds of the way through this. Yep. The best one third of a baseball game is yet to come. Drew Butera will chop it foul off. Santana who's had it just one inning after another where he's been hit by foul balls or pitches or when he comes to the plate lines one off his knee. You know and this happens four or five times a game the catchers not only gets him but it gets Angel Hernandez. <laughs> oh. Talk about concussion in sports it always amazes me catchers don't have more of them. That ball's in the air to right field, not deep. They were playing him way over by the line. Cruz is there. Drew is retired. Drew Butera out of there. You know, Gary, there's no question getting to the big leagues, you know, you grow up as a kid dreaming of that, dream come true. But if I had to take the beating that Santana's taking today, <laughs> I'm not sure that would be my dream come true. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? <laughs> well, if they lose, he's got to do it again tomorrow. Mm hmm. And these guys are not ready to catch nine innings. I mean, their knees take a beating right now. Here, Anthony Granado. Strike on the outside corner. He is flied out and grounded out. There is Sierra. He has regularly come into ball games as a defensive replacement in left field. And that pitch is taken for a strike. Here are some options that Team Italy's manager, Marco Mazzari, could have. I mean, there's some pinch hitters that he could throw up there. But he's going to finish the game like he started it with his best defensive team out there. Feeling like that's more important than trying to add on. We'll have to wait a minute on this one. One ball, two strike count. Four runs, one hit in the first inning. Since then, Team Italy got a couple of hits in the fifth, two singles, but not scored. And the only other base runners they've had have come via the walk. 4 3 0 oh for Italy, three left on. The Dominican, 2 6 0, oh, six left on base. Two ball, two strike count. Marcelo came on, worked an inning in the third, gave up a walk. That was it off him. Ground ball to second this time. Cano will make the play. Renato retired. I don't know which surprised me more, Gary. The start of the game by Edison Volquez or the quality of the game that Tiago De Silva pitched. If Both any, pretty high up there. If anybody were to go out there and walk the first three guys of the game, you might have thought it was the guy that had never pitched in the big leagues before. Never pitched in this ballpark. Never pitched a game this important. But it was just the other way around. I'll give the nod to De Silva because even though Italy got those four runs, there it's going to be a base hit into left field. Holding down this Dominican lineup for the five and a third innings. A couple of runs on five hits. 
I think it's just amazing the great job. His ability to, to throw the off speed pitch for a strike when he was behind in the count. He never gave them what they wanted. Nick Punto picks up his second hit. He's two for three, a strikeout and a walk and a run scored in the ball game. And top of the order now, Italy with Punto the leadoff batter on at first base. The North Yap, he has walked and scored and singled. They've gotten the job done. Two down though. Pitches outside for a ball. Santana reaching. Gary, right along with the way I like the way the outfield has been defensively set up for Italy. I think that the Dominican Republic team is way too shallow right now. There's two outs. You've got to cut off the gaps. Close, close Whoa. play in first place. A great job on the part of Encarnacion from keeping that ball from going down the line. Boy, that would have been a big play. And that would have been a runner at third base. Encarnacion going over Nick Punto that time to hang on. Pinto's got a little bit of speed. I mean, if he gets the proper jump, he'll have the green light here. But I just think they're way too shallow, particularly in left field and right field, to cut off a ball in the gap. Jammed him with a pitch down and in to Norfia 101. Pedro Strope has been effective in the games he has appeared in in the classic. In fact, he got a win in the second game for the Dominican Republic. Third game he's been in. He's worked two and two thirds innings, giving up no runs, no hits. Chopper to short. Reyes has got it. Cano's here to cover, and that will do it. Oops. Second time there's been a big slide there at second base. Denorfia that time going in. Cano not particularly happy with it, but that was uh, from Pundo rather on the slide. Just a good hard slide. Hello. Hey here as seventh inning stretch time concluded. The Dominican coming up. Trying to find a way. Yaz is at the plate, their number nine hitter. He has lined out, struck out four for 11 now in the classic. And the off speed pitch delivered from the first base side is inside. You're, you're exactly right. This has been a tremendous game. Offense, defense, great pitching. For a lot of people that thought this might be a mercy rule. Mm -hmm. When it began, and then after the top of the first, I, I <laughs> so did I. But maybe the other way around. Bad Venditti falling behind here and gets the strike, three and one. All right now, the Dominican trying to get at least the potential tying run to the plate. Top of the order, Reyes waiting on deck. Venditti's delivery will be put up in the air. And a fair ball. Ball blew back right there. Rizzo puts it away. And uh, seventh inning, one out. Take a look at the box score here. Not a whole lot going on for Tony Pena's team. A team that came into this series hitting 324 collectively. A couple of solo home runs and a lot of runners left on base. Six have been stranded. Pitch is taken for a strike. Six left on by the Dominican. Top of the order, Reyes turned around here by the left hander. Had a home run, third inning, his first of the classic, one for three in the game. He is five for 17 overall in this classic. The fans really being treated to quite a ball game and maybe a major upset. Maybe. That is there for a strike on the outside corner. Nice breaking ball coming back to catch the outer half of the plate. Perfectly located, which is what you've got to do to get a good hitter out. Banditti will miss inside. Banditti uh, last year was with Triple A Yankees, one and one, 13 innings pitch for them. Minor league seasons, five of them, 14 and 12 record. And he got him to reach again down the line. Second baseman, best angle. It is a foul ball. 
Bermuda Triangle in foul territory that time. Nick Puno just couldn't get there. Rizzo, the first baseman, with his back to the plate. The only Fiorini one who could have made right. that play was Puto right there. He's the only guy, and for some reason, at the last second, he looked up like he heard something. Gary, once again, a situation where you've got people playing positions and with each other with not a whole lot of experience. I think Nick Puto would have caught that ball had that play happened with the Los Angeles Dodgers and two other guys that he plays with every day. That's going to be a base hit. So the out not recorded ends up being a single. And boy, excited at first base. Before he even got to the bag, he started pointing over to his dugout. Let's go, let's go. Had his arms going in the air. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do. Tony Pena telling us during batting practice his number one job as a manager in this game was to set the table for Robinson Cano. He is our hero. He's our superstar. He's the one that's supposed to take us to the semifinals and the final. Well, Reyes has done his job. Now it's up to Eric Ibar to get on base. Two for four ball game for Reyes, who had pulled the ball the other times up. Moving around to the right side, he goes straight up the middle. And here is Eric Ibar. Ibar 0 for 3, the designated hitter. Team Italia trying to stand up to the pressure of making four first inning runs hold up. Pitches there for a strike. Ibar showed bunt. Bringing Liddy in from third base. I really think he was just trying to upset Mendidi to throw a ball and possibly give him a free pass. Trying to get on first base any way possible. That's going to be a base hit into center field. Reyes makes the turn, will stay. Northfield will get it back in. Back to back singles with one away. Now, as a manager, as we look at Tony Pena, you feel real good about yourself. Breaking ball up in the zone, not the location that was needed. Particularly when you're trying to get a ground ball to end the inning before Cano comes up representing the tying or possible go ahead run. Eric Ibar with that same enthusiasm we saw from Reyes, knowing that now they've done their job, it's time for Mr. Cano to do what he does. And throughout, the games that were played in San Juan and now here in Miami, the fans from the Dominican, every time Cano gets up, start chanting MVP, MVP. He was the MVP in the first round in San Juan. Venerati's warming up in the bullpen. And here's Robinson Cano, another chance to be yet a star again. A double in the first inning, a homer in the sixth, two for three. Now has 11 hits and 18 at bats, two home runs, six RBIs in the classic. First and second, and one out. Cano will take the pitch, a strike on the outside corner, one and one. A Yankee minor leaguer on the mound, a Yankee major leaguer plus at the plate. He finds a way to get Cano out. He might not be in the minor leagues for long. <laughs> or he may never see the light of day. <laughs> well, he would just fall into a category with everybody else. I got beat by one of the game's best. Two balls, one strike to know. Reyes, the lead runner, I bar at first. Great speed on the base pass. Cano asking for the timeout.
Oh, pull the string on him. Two and two. And that just comes from seeing a guy that you've never seen before. That breaking ball right up around the letters for Cano, something that he could normally elevate, put the barrel of the bat on. Like you said, just enough of an off speed pitch that it had him out in front. I like that fastball down and away now. Cano will pop it up left field, not deep. Costanzo coming, shortstop out, can't get it, Granado, and the bases are loaded. There have been two plays that maybe coulda, woulda, shoulda. Shoulda is exactly right. I think the first one was kind of a coulda on Nick Puto down the right field line on the ball hit by Reyes. He could not make that play. Reyes followed up with a base hit. This ball should have been caught. As a middle infielder, you go as hard as you can until you hear something. He never heard a word from the left fielder, Michael Costanzo. So if you're Granada, you got to go get it. You got to make that play. He comes up a little bit short, not able to secure it, and now all kinds of problems for Team Italy. So Cano reaches, the bases are loaded. We'll go to the bullpen. One more time as the pressure continues in the sixth inning Dominican Republic got a run they left the bases loaded they've loaded them again in the seventh. Just set having trailed since the first inning. By four they cut it to four two now the bases are loaded for the Dominican Republic. Aaron Canacion is up only one away. Left handers delivery is going to miss inside for a ball. You might wonder why a left hander is brought in again from Team Italy's bullpen. You go with your best in a situation like this. Fonirati is a guy who gets a lot of ground balls when he's right. That's what they need now. Fonirati will miss up high with that one. Also, when you look at the bases loaded. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got to bring in somebody that throws strikes, and a mistake here could cost Team Italy this ball game. 2-0 delivery, 3-0. Panarotti holding his arms out after the call. Like, what was that? I don't blame him. Catcher sitting on the outer half of the plate, but that easily catches the inner part of the plate to me. Angel Hernandez is not. Had an outstanding ball game behind the plate today. 3-0 delivery on the way. That's ball four, and Panarotti screaming at a Angel Hernandez. It is a one-run ball game. Two pitches that Panarotti thought were strikes, and on that last one, he just let it fly verbally. Hernandez took the mask off, but didn't walk out. Normally. In a big league game, if that would have happened to Angel Hernandez, he would have thrown the pitcher out immediately. I think in the back of his mind is that, you know what, I might have missed the last two pitches. There's no doubt the 2 0 pitch was a strike. That's borderline whether it's on the corner or not. Ryan well, Canacion will be credited with the RBI watching the pitcher, letting Angel Hernandez have it. It's a 4 3 game. Bases remain loaded. Still only one out. Now the whole infield is staring in at Angel Hernandez from the mound. Nick Punto really upset. Another bullpen change here. Menorati will come on and work only to one hitter. Brian Sweeney. Veteran with some big league experience called upon. An outstanding ball game here and as Mike Piazza told us before the game team Italy could not beat themselves. Watch Nick Puto here. The last second giving up on the baseball looking to right field a play that could have been made. Watch him look towards the outfielder instead of continuing on the baseball. That's when all of a sudden nobody could make that play. And then the very same thing happened. A play that should have been made. Granado got to that ball. It clanked off his glove. 
and the perfect game defensively by Italy is gone. Bases loaded one away here is Henley Ramirez pitches inside to him from Brian Sweeney out of Yonkers New York where he was born in the Seattle Mariners organization pitched triple A last year has had a couple of games 73 actually at the major league level 1 0 delivery on the way taken it's a strike. I remember Sweeney in the big leagues in Seattle about a decade ago. He's a guy that's not going to overpower you with that fastball. What he has to do, as he did there, is locate the off speed stuff, his secondary pitches, Gary, to make his fastball better. Job in front of him here, trying to get Ramirez. Infield will stay at double play depth. One ball, one strike count. One down, four three ball game. And that'll be up high. One out single by Reyes started it. Ibar followed it up with that base hit that fell in the first one. Then Cano that loop single to left field. Then the walk with the bases loaded. Arcanesiano got the RBI. Now Ramirez with the sacks full. Ibar, Cano, Ramirez, or Arcanesiano rather the base runners. Two one delivery is high in the air. Center field runner wheel tag. I buy good speed. The Norvio's throw to the plate. It'll be cut off. Throw to third, not in time, and the ball game is tied. Just a professional at bat there on the part of Hanley Ramirez. Knowing that Italy needed the ground ball double play to get out of this inning with the lead. He looked for something that he could put in the air. He got it. Look at him go down and get that. He elevated it. Not happy that he didn't do more with it than that. But knowing that he did just enough to not only tie the ball game up, but continue the inning with an opportunity to take the first lead of the afternoon. So a 4 4 game two runs in here in the seventh inning now runners at first and third and here is Nelson Cruz as the Dominican will try and get the lead on a 2 out base hit Cruz up high to him for a ball Cruz has got to be patient here there's a scouting report out on Brian Sweeney he's been around a while. Do not let him beat you on an off speed pitch. He's not going to locate three fastballs in the zone very often in any one at bat. One of the count runners off first and third. Swing it a pitch away, a heater, and it will go to one and one. Nobody's been able to get a two out hit in this ball game today. Italy's gone 0 for 7 in their chances. Now the Dominican trying to find that two out hit. They've already stranded six. And they do a base hit in the right field and a broken bat. Cano will score, and the Dominican leads it by one. It's time to eat right now for the team from the Dominican Republic. The table was set when Reyes and Ibar got on base. It gave their superstar Robinson Cano a chance to do what he does. He came through and since then Encarnacion with the walk the sacrifice fly by Ramirez and now the base hit as you said Gary with two outs to give the Dominican their first lead. And Didi will be charged with all three of those runs. Sweeney now again runners at first and third two away and Santana the eighth to hit for the Dominican Republic here in the seventh inning. Pitches up high for a ball. For Cruz that RBI is the sixth that he has had in classic play. And a potential game winning RBI 
to put his team up 5 4, the 10th hit they've had in the ballgame. Santana 0 for 2 and a walk. Takes the pitch for the strike 1 and 1. Yeah, we talked about it at the top of the first when Italy put up that four spot with the tremendous lineup and the depth that the team from the Dominican Republic has. We did not think that was going to be enough. Here's the 1 1 delivery in the way that will be inside. Well, the Dominican finally finding a way to get the bats going. Still more to come. We'll see here with Encarnacion the lead runner and Cruz over there at first base. Carlos Santana taking his time. Sweeney a 2 1 delivery. Sweeney coming back with that off speed pitch. Good change up behind in the count. Boy, the sad part for Team Italy as much as anything. The job by Tiago da Silva. Now, instead of picking up a victory in round two of the World Baseball Classic, stands to get a no decision. He pitched better than that. Two ball, two strike count. Runners off first and third. Montana will follow back. Dominican has certainly had their chances in this ball game. They've had nine base runners in the last inning and two thirds. They left the bases loaded in the sixth inning of the ball game. The first five innings, five runners and a run. The last inning and two thirds, nine runners and four runs. Arvanian's team is loaded and it's bound to happen. It's still hard for me to believe that Liddy was not charged with an error on that ground ball. First of all, it should have been a double play in the inning over with. But Tamiris credited with a base hit. 2 2 delivery on the way, swung on and missed. So Sweeney will get the strikeout, but the Dominican. Will pick up the three runs. They did it on uh, four hits. They'll leave two on base, seven complete. Game one here in the second round in Miami, and for the first time, the Dominican Republic leads by one. So, a real good ball game being played here at Marlins Park. You take a look at uh, Italy's numbers. Well, absolutely nothing from the bottom four down there. But that's not the problem at hand for Santiago Casilla. Coming in here with the score tied four to four. It's three, four, and five that he has got to face in this first game of round two of the World Baseball Classic. And there is the reliever. Pedro Strope worked an inning, gave up a hit, has got a chance to be the winning pitcher. With the Giants last year for Casilla, excellent numbers. 25 saves, 284 ERA. Santiago Casilla facing Anthony Rizzo. They have not scored since the first inning, Team Italy. They've had only three hits since then. They've had only one runner in the scoring position since the first inning. Well, now they're asked to do something that nobody in the postseason could do hit Casilla. And that score a run off of him, exactly. Just absolutely dominant, along with the rest of that bullpen for the San Francisco Giants. Of course, Romo taking over the closer role about halfway through the season from Casilla. Two zero count, and that pitch is in there. Two and one. Pitching wise, in the bullpen in the first round. Bullpen at a 4.15 ERA, seven earned runs in 18 and two thirds innings. Opponents hit only 2.14, however, in the first round off the Dominican bullpen. 2 1 delivery on the way, fisted that one straight up in the air, and we'll see it comes on to make the play. You know, Gary, a lot like 
like what Tony Pena did when he put his lineup together trying to get that table set for his superstar Robinson Cano. The same thing is true for Team Italy. When you hit a guy third like you do Rizzo, you want him up with men on base. If you're the team from the Dominican Republic, that's the situation you want to face him in with nobody on. One down. Alex Liddy coming up. RBI side fly. He has struck out hit into a fielder's choice. Liddy the RBI on that side fly. Colobello with the home run in the first inning. Good for three. That's it. Those are the four runs up for Team Italy. And a bouncer. The Dominican, the home run by Reyes, the home run by Cano. RBIs are in Canacion with the bases loaded walk. Ramirez the sack fly and Cruz an RBI single. Cano's had another big day with a double homer single three for four. One oh pitch and that's going to be down low. Obviously Italy here would love to get the walk in front of their power hitter up next. That's been it for them today. One swing of the bat. Oh, you just looked at the team that Tony Pena put together. You knew that he had the last three or four innings in mind with that bullpen strength. 2-0 delivery and a chopper that's going to go to short. It's going to be a long throw and got him. Reyes with that arm from deep in the hole. And Canacion with a big stretch. Not only the range to get there, Gary, but the arm strength to get it there in the air and the quickness that he knew he had to get rid of it with. That's what makes shortstop such a difficult position at third base. You've got a little bit more time the ball gets to you quicker at second base you've got a shorter throw. None of those advantages on this play you've got to come up with it. The throws got to be accurate with a lot on it. Not many people can make that play. Reyes does and there are two down. Chris Calabello had a walk his last time up and he'll take the strike on the outside corner. Two down, nobody on. Eighth inning. Now it's time running out for Team Italy. Winning team gets the day off tomorrow. Losing team has to come right back and play the loser of tonight's game. That's a coin toss for me tonight, buddy. USA and Puerto Rico. I have learned my lesson ever betting against anything that Yadier Molina has something to do with. <laughs> he can shut down anybody offensively. And oh yeah, he can also provide some offense now. And a bouncer that's going to be fouled away. USA of course losing their opener or bounced away rather and uh, then coming back to get the two wins they needed and then must win game against Canada. Puerto Rico and the Dominican went two and oh in their games in San Juan and then faced one another with the Dominican Republic coming away with the victory four to two over Puerto Rico in the final game in San Juan. One two pitch he hit that. I think he went. I think that's a fair ball and he's out. Bellabello on the rebound hit the ball and it stayed on the line in fair territory. Santana followed it up and they get the out and the side is retired in order in the eighth inning. You won't see this very often. Watch this. How many times do you ground out to the catcher? That might be the first time I've ever seen it. I've only seen. Pedro Guerrero hit a ball that bounced. I've never seen one like that recorded as an out. Vladimir Guerrero, maybe. This will be the first at bat for Moise Sierra, who came on to play in left field here in the eighth inning. And he'll put the ball to right field. Gavrini is there and we'll put it away for the out. This is game one of two to be played here in Miami. First 
of the second round here and uh, you see tonight U.S. will be playing and uh, tonight U.S. Puerto Rico the loser of this game and the loser of tonight's game will be meeting up and uh, then we move on we'll get to see the winners play winners of these two games will play on Thursday so the second game for a couple of these teams will be an elimination game two teams will move on to San Francisco for the semi and final but right off the bat after two days somebody's gone quick happens in a hurry Jazz on the off speed delivery swung on a miss Brian Sweeney remains on the mound Volk has a starter went four and a third gave up four runs on three hits but he walked four struck out two. so Daniel came on third of an inning and that is going to be swung out of this place going to be made at first base as a strikeout victim when he gets his second strikeout. Well proud to have the MetLife blimp Snoopy one providing live coverage flying overhead 1500 feet up the Met blimp has provided a unique perspective for over 25 years for fans thrilled to be part of the 2013 World Baseball Classic. You take a look at downtown Miami. Here is Reyes the igniter in the seventh inning when he picked up a one out single that started the runs roaring. He Ibar and Cano one two three in the order would all score in the inning. 1 0 pitch is taken first strike. Strope with an inning and a one hit for the Dominican, a chance to be the winner. Lorenzo Barcelo did an outstanding job prior to him, an inning and a third, and gave up nothing. He held the fort, and the Dominican came back and got the runs. You know, in this day and age, Gary, where people aren't hitting 70 home runs during a regular season, a guy like Jose Reyes is even more valuable than, than ever before. One of those guys that has the ability to put himself in the scoring position. You walk him, he can steal second. He hits doubles, he hits triples, and like today, he hits homers. Talking with uh, Tony Pena and their coaching staff in San Juan, one of the things they did in putting this roster together was to go away from the power hitters they had loaded it up with power hitters and past classics they wanted more contact hitters on this team yeah you want your power hitters and you got those but more contact hitters to get on base and it's worked that'll be handled Pierini out in right field puts it away in a one two three inning by Sweeney so team Italy trying to pull the big upset held a four nothing lead seventh inning Dominican went ahead we go. We're back with the Dominican Republic up by one run here in the first game of round two. How did they get there? Fernando Rodney with that outstanding change up to get the save and the victory. Their second of round one against Spain. That was all it took for them to get here to Miami. But for them to be the home team in this series, they needed to go out and beat Puerto Rico. They did that four to two. And really, I think putting away the thoughts of the embarrassment from the 09 World Baseball Classic, Gary, when they were eliminated in the first round. That has been a big deal, a big motivator for this team. Rodney's got a chance now to get his third save in this classic. He has been untouchable. Italy needs a run, at least one here, to try and keep this game going as we go to the ninth inning. And the first pitch will be in there for a strike. Fernando Mike Costanzo up. Gary has actually been untouchable for the last 12 months. He has worked two and a third innings, given up no runs, no hits here in the classic. Fouled away, and that's two strikes. I don't know that anybody in the game has a bigger separation between his two pitches. He can throw the fastball at 98 miles an hour, he can throw the changeup, sometimes at 70 miles an hour. Here's the 0-2 delivery, and that's going to be swung on a miss, and there's that changeup. I think it's unhittable. 
I mean, even if you're looking for it, there's so much movement to it. There's so much arm speed. That ball's probably a foot outside. But halfway to home plate, it looked like it was right down the middle. Oh, he records the out. One down. Italy down to two outs here to try and get a run to keep the ball game going. Tyler Latore is the pinch hitter getting a left hander up. Pena's ball club looking to go four and zero oh in the classic. Get themselves a day off tomorrow. Play the winner of tonight's game. Rodney inside on him one on one. Gary, I think Tony Pena deserves a lot of credit for this victory this afternoon. The way he pieced together that bullpen, bringing in the right guy at just the right time, Sedano to strike out Rizzo with men on first and third back in the fifth. Downtown, he couldn't get through this without at least one more pop. Well, with two more outs, buddy, you're going to get a day off tomorrow, and there's nobody that's going to need it more than you are. Oh, my. It was the left wrist, the left elbow, and now the left shoulder. And when that ball doesn't glance off, when it stops or goes forward, I mean, that's solid. That, that, that's. And he fouled the ball directly off his knee. That's right. That's right. That was the right knee. So we got the right knee and, and the left arm that are just shot. Tony Pena understands has great empathy with catchers. Look at that 98 miles an hour. But I would just to finish my point on Tony Pena. If, if you're a team out there in the first couple of months of the season looking to make a manager's change. Think about the guys that have gotten a second chance. Think about Joe Girardi Bruce Bochy Joe Torrey. What do they have in common with Tony Pena. They all got better the second time around and they're all former catchers. He's been tremendous. I know that you said he did a great job in Puerto Rico with his ball club, how he handled the bullpen, how he put together the team. As we look at the skipper, and former New York Yankee manager, Los Angeles Dodger manager Joe Torre. Two ball, two strike count here. Tyler Latour at the plate outside, and you're going to add another one to that list and another catcher. Second time around in Toronto, John Gibbons. Will it be better? He's challenged. It's just as hard and maybe harder to manage a team loaded with stars as it is to manage a ball club where you may be a little short. Where there's no expectations? Yes. Yeah. No team has more expectations going than does Toronto with all the off deals. And there's a walk. So Rodney surrenders the free pass. The tie is not going to go easy here. That's the first walk surrendered by the Dominican pitcher since. One by Barcelo came in the middle of the ball game and the three leadoff walks that all scored in the first inning. Going to the bench again, Stefano De Simone is coming up. Our pinch runner, I'm sorry, he's going to run. So De Simone running at first base. And a ground ball towards short. Could be the ball game. Reyes to Cano, the relay to first base, and that's that. Utera hits into the double play. The Dominican wins it. And they take game one of the second round and are 4 0 in classic play. We were both talking before the game, just hoping that these games were half as good as round one was in Puerto Rico and in Arizona. This has been every bit as good. You saw the best of Team Italy. You saw why they're here. They've got some firepower. They've got some people that can pitch. And you also saw the tremendous strength and depth of the team from the Dominican Republic. I think we both agree from the very beginning, Tony Pena's club was the team to beat throughout this entire World Baseball Classic. And they still are. Pedro Strope will get the win. He's 2 0 in the Classic. Venditti will take the loss 0 and 1. Rodney gets his third save. 
His patented celebration that started to honor his father by shooting a star out of the sky. Now he just shoots the stars out and has been presented with a beautiful bow and arrow set, but he keeps it home. I hope the, the MetLife Gimp was not up there anywhere near where that arrow came down. I think that's great. I, 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 the game of baseball sports is all about entertainment, and that is entertaining to me. There's the look. The blimp is all right. We can confirm survival because wow. they're still taking shots from on high. I love Snoopy. I was, <laughs> I was worried. The Dominican defies the numbers in the classic. Team scoring first had gone 20 and 10 in classic games coming into this one. But Italy cannot make that four run first inning hang on. Tonight, Puerto Rico, the United States will be back 8 o'clock Eastern. Zip zip GMT time. For Rick Sutcliffe and all of our crew in Miami, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Hope you'll come back and join us again tonight. Final score here, the Dominican Republic in a come-from-behind win, 5-4. And Team Italy will live to fight again. Here are the lines. Stroke the winner, Venditti the loser. Rodney's got his third save. 5 10 and 0 for the Dominican, 4 4 and 0 for Italy. Well, what's hard to believe is that Team Italy was not charged with an error. They needed to play a perfect game to come up with a victory here this afternoon. Some defensive plays that got away from them really were the difference in this game. We'll see you later on tonight. Adieu.